Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Dr. Gene Dorio with my co-host, Barbara Cochran, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. We're talking with Alex Urbina about uh, life coaching and, you know, for our seniors, a difficult task, Alex, because age plays a role, confidence plays a role, um, and then, you know, drugs and, you know, medications and, you know, losses play a role. I mean, it's there's a whole gamut of physical and psychological problems taking place in our senior population. And sometimes our seniors don't want to reach out. They don't know that they're starting to fail physically and, and psychologically. So we've been talking about extracting some of those seniors out by just saying, hey, it's there, it's there if you want it, it's there if you need help, and hopefully they come and they turn around. Yeah, and I think that you guys are doing an amazing job by being an invitation, and I think that's the most powerful way you can inspire others is to educate people, let them know that there's a different way to live your life, a different way to think, um, and just keep inspiring them, keep inviting them to come out and or reach out or get out of your house or go for a walk or just keep it talking to people about that, and I think you guys are you're doing that, and I think you guys uh, are, are doing an amazing job, and I think people are out there a little bit at a time getting out of their comfort zone and you guys are making that difference you might not necessarily realize it you might not be getting the calls or people not, might not be writing in but I, I feel like you guys are making a huge impact in, well, thank in you our, Alex and you community. know I, I know that with Barb you know co-hosting this show she's had the experience of, of facing a very troubling problem that you know a lot of seniors do end up facing and and making it through that so there are so many stories that are related around uh, Barbara and and getting a, a bad diagnosis and then having to fight through that and surviving mentally and physically and you know <clears throat> it's interesting my doctor put me on opioids because of the pain and um, hydrocodone which is bad stuff and so uh, my son came to visit one day and I had that file of medicine on the coffee table he said mom what's that and I told him he said throw it away that stuff will kill you he said let me get you some CBD pills and that is medical cannabis oil from the marijuana plant and within four days my pain was gone absolutely gone and I use Charlotte's web now it's hemp oil and um, I put drops on my uh, in my coffee every morning about 30 drops and I do it every single day and <clears throat> I, I think it, it helps me feel good physically mm -hmm. and it's interesting because I was at the gym this morning and my trainer she said you won't believe it she said but my dad was watching a show a documentary on Charlotte's Web on the TV last night mm -hmm. and she said he told me he said, I didn't realize that stuff was so good for you I always thought it made you stumble around <laughs> and I said get your dad to do some more research I said the problem today is all of these federal people state people closing down the dispensaries that are so vital to so many people they don't do the research and if you do the research on med medical marijuana cannabis oil you will unbelievably be shocked mm -hmm. here's something ironic is that <clears throat> i started taking cbd five months ago because I have this chronic blinking problem. I've had it probably the last three or four years. And I never really realized how how bad it was until I started seeing some video of myself. And when you're watching video and the eyes is just going uncontrollably and it seems like it only comes up when I get excited or when I'm passionate or I'm talking, which is most of the time of what I'm doing. Every time I'm coaching or standing in front of someone, I'm really excited and animated and that little eye will be twitching. And I couldn't figure out how, no matter what I was doing, to get it to stop. Well, somebody shared a story with me about a tumor that, that they had um, and that they were doing, uh, they were taking CBD oil. 
and that the tumor started to shrink. Mm -hmm. So they referred me to their doctor. I went to the doctor, had a, um, I had a consultation. They thought I was a great candidate for it. I started taking it, and lo and behold, a little bit at a time, I started the blinking started to to stop. It's and amazing. I feel I feel I feel great. I get great sleep at night. It's it's an amazing uh, thing. But but I'm also still continuing to research it because it's still new. And I think people, I think people are afraid of it. They don't, you know, it has ties. You know, to different words that right. that scare people. But I think it's an amazing Did uh, you piece. Have when somebody recommended CBD, did you have any reservations about, I mean, because of all the things that have been said, and how about you, Barb? Either one of you have reservations about? I, th I think at the time that it was happening, I think it was, um, I had gotten a couple of other people um, and this is weird because it was like unconsciously other people were telling me about it. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. Right before the lady with the tumor was t talking to me about the CBD, about a month ago, a month earlier, I was out visiting a cousin of mine, and she was, my cousin was talking about her youngest daughter that has Tourette's, and that she was doing the cannabis oil, mm -hmm. and that she was noticing the improvement. So for whatever reason, at that time in that in that two month period, I had other people in my life were 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 sharing these stories. So, mm -hmm. and I'm the kind of person I look for signs. Mm -hmm. So when I, when it was when it, when a good friend of mine, the one that had the tumor, was telling me about the CBD, I was like, all right, this has to be a sign now. <laughs> I, I keep hearing it from so many different. Uh, people and it's just happening right now at the perfect mm -hmm. time let me just go try it and I'm one of those people that I, I'm just open I'm open-minded I want to I want to see all different things I don't want to just believe because you're telling me that you know that these pills are gonna make you feel better I'm just gonna go now run out and take pills I'm always looking for alternative ways to heal myself especially if it's a healthier way so it's interesting you have not had but maybe one or two of those blinking sessions the whole time we've been I've sitting been here. Any. And if I can and show you, you the used, video, you if I can show you the video. Do it oh, so you remember. Time. So oh, you yes. remember, yeah. Yes, yeah. I did remember. But how about you, Barb? How about in terms of when you were diagnosed and you were given chemotherapy and you weren't feeling well? Uh, yes, maybe your son has was involved in understanding what other med medications could do but did you have reservations about using cbd or no anything like you didn't have any no. you were okay you were okay with it no because i had done the research uh -huh. and my son had been involved with it mm -hmm. for about eight years oh, okay and of course so it just blended into what, yeah and of course life? he's been fighting for it because he's been shut down all over the place <laughs> you know because our government doesn't doesn't do their research. No, well, it's only because uh, uh, marijuana is a Schedule One drug. I know. And so and and it's and on Schedule the level. Two is everything else. It's on the level of peyote and a <laughs> uh, um, whole bunch of other which is uh, incredible problem drugs that they because it's a Schedule One they won't allow the LSD they won't allow research on it and although you know you don't when you do that you kind of narrow your vision a little bit literally to trying to understand some of the benefits you might get from it but here's what I told myself mm -hmm. I told my wife I'm just gonna try it mm -hmm. if 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 I try it for three months and it doesn't do anything nothing lost mm -hmm. right I'm not eat and I swear after the second by the second month all of a sudden my family started to tell me hey dad I noticed you're not blinking as much my wife started to so when I started getting the feedback I mean come on it's it's obvious that as I started to take it, it started to slow my um, my nervous system down. It started mm -hmm. to calm things down. Mm -hmm. Stuff that I wasn't able to do mindfully. And here I am, a life coach, and, and all I do is mindfulness and mm -hmm. getting centered and grounded. And, and I couldn't even control that little nervous system that kept tweaking like that. So I needed that kind of support, and I'm glad that I was able to, I was introduced to it, and I, and I followed through with it. Well, the CBD pills have more cannabis oil in them than it does the THC. That's right. That's the only part of the plant 
that causes you to and the THC is a part that gets you high where most that's most right people, I think that's, uh, but uh, it's but there's no it's, major addicting part about CBD that's correct no none at all however some CBD pills do have a certain amount of THC and that's that's on purpose. Yeah. Because it like there's 0. 0.5, 0. 0.8. Right. And and they say that the blend with a, a smaller portion of the THC combined with the CBD even enhances the CBD even more. Absolutely. So that's the reason why they give you just the, the smaller percentage because it boosts the CBD more. And also at the same time, it relaxes your system to allow the good part of the oil to work. And it also helps you to sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really does. It, it's, it's absolutely And one of my concerns amazing. when I told the doctor in the very beginning is, I don't want to be high. I've never been high. I don't want to be high. And he goes, got it. He goes, you're, you're the classic example of somebody that wants it for the medical use mm -hmm. so that you can get the benefits of it in, a, in your well-being. Mm -hmm. And I haven't experienced anything... I haven't experienced any kind of alteration because I don't, I have the 0.5 THC mm -hmm. and the 65 CBD, which, um, you know, I, I just, it's happening internally and I don't really know it. I'm just noticing that the effects, I'm um, getting the results from it. You know, I think it's we're, the, our listeners are going, wow, this is great motivation right now. I'm hearing something that, you know, could be helpful to me, but I don't want to sound like an infomercial or anything well, like the, that. I'm gonna be, well, I didn't come on here to talk about that. Yeah. I don't know how we started talking about it the second half, but again, I believe in signs. So, and I also believe that if something is coming up and, and, and it's funny because every time I come on a radio show and people say, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. I kind of leave it up to, mm -hmm. uh, we call it God, we call it spirit, we call it universe or whatever supposed to be what we're supposed to be talking about that's what we're supposed to be talking about and for whatever reason it came up and i think it was needed it was a it's a quality of life issue that's right it is. you know what i see in my patients unfortunately as they're getting older and starting to have medical problems the classical physicians like myself they just pull out their prescription pad. So mm -hmm. when I do house calls, I'm seeing a whole list of polypharmacy on my patients, and certainly some of them could be causing problems that alter their quality of life. So it's all, it is connected together in That's some right. way to, you know, and sometimes even the medicine will keep them from seeking help which they should be trying to do, but they're not aware that they should. And I watched my father at the last end of his life uh, dealing with uh, stage five cancer, stage five, four. stage four yeah. cancer. Um, and he was getting the Vicodins and he was getting all of those, uh, those pills that were, that were just, I mean, to see him already suffering with the cancer and then the medications was, was horrible. It was really horrible. And mm. had I know, and we tried, and it's funny because at the time we tried everything like the, uh, the, the, the water, the, you know, the alkaline water and, mm. uh, right yeah, they tried all kinds of, we, we tried the oils from the Himalayas they would rub on the, or the mud. We tried all the hokey pokey stuff because we wanted him to, to find a, a, a way of healing from in a healthy way yeah, mm -hmm. or not suffering or yeah, not being yeah. uncomfortable yeah and, you know that brings up a topic r real quick it's end of life we have an end of life law here uh it started on june the 9th uh but then we had uh, a individual from santa clarita who was uh played a marked role in attaining the mm -hmm. laws here in california certainly you know, these laws in Oregon, Washington, California, and a few other states are not perfect. Uh, and we're all afraid that they're gonna be taken advantage of. But our seniors, you know, they have questioned constantly me about end of life care and the end of life law. I'm not an expert in it. Uh, I haven't had a patient yet that I've had to utilize the law. But fact is, you know, when patients uh, are suffering or family members are suffering, we're all looking for the little uh, notion or lotion or whatever it is that will help them out in some way and allow them to have an option of life, allow them to continue making decisions, but yet not allowing them to suffer mm -hmm. in the process and be in pain. So we're, we're our society, you know, you know, maybe in the past didn't like CBD and you know a lot of other these other things, but you know we have to start looking out and saying, yeah, well, let's be open a little bit more on how we are going to make decisions medically for those people, especially our seniors who are facing 
predicaments and problems that, you know, as a younger person, you're just not going to face, but they're facing it right now. And we have to learn how to deal with that. And I think the key distinction that you said is be open. Let's be open to the possibility that there's other ways to heal ourselves mm-hmm. um, than than what the traditional way is, which is get medicated and and you know numb yourself out. That's true, and it it all revolves around quality of life. Mm-hmm. It really does, and I think if I was at a point in my life where I was in horrible pain no getting better I wouldn't want to live any longer I really wouldn't Mm -hmm. and I would hope that my family and my friends would would go along with my decision if it came to that I know my family would Mm -hmm. because they've they've we've all talked about it you know but certainly you don't want somebody else who you don't know whether they're a doctor or anyone uh, in the community saying to you, you can't do that. That's right. You know, that that's that's right. becomes to me a moral and ethical issue that, you know, yes, I think some of these laws are starting to deal with. And I think that's important that you know, as important. we look at it, we go, okay, you know, let's, let's move forward with these. Let's be open and make sure that uh, we're doing the right thing for our loved ones, uh, people we care give for, our seniors who are out there. Let's make sure uh, we're heading in that direction. And I, I, I do think as a classical, classic doctor trying to, you know, move in, in and out of the laws that we have, you know, I still feel that the doors are still open for me to be able to make sure that my patients don't suffer. And I, and I think there's a lot of people that are making laws and decisions that probably have never really suffered pain, mm-hmm. chronic pain to Absolutely. the degree where you just get hammered with that pain all day long, week after week, month after month, year after year. It, it has to tear down the psyche of a human being at a certain Absolutely. point. It has to be, it has to just really, you know, uh, damper your spirit at a certain point to where you just, you don't have the tolerance anymore for it. No, and I, you know, as being a physician, and I see that. I see that. A you can probably see it in home. their eyes. You can, when oh, you walk in, you can probably see you that. Know, in, a, in the hospital, and mm-hmm. you know, and I know when their confidence is going down. I know that when they, to a degree, have given up. And you know, it's my job to be able to sense that and feel that, uh, so that I can ask them, ask them the appropriate questions uh, of the direction they want their life to go, so they can make the decisions with their family around them. If I'm not doing that, then. And I, I don't consider myself a good doctor. I, ju- I just can't. So that sensitivity has to be out there. And of course, um, in order, when you see a patient for five minutes or 10 minutes, you know, as a physician, you're really not going to get that handle and understanding and be able to perceive where the patient's coming from. Well, good for you for being a doctor that that embraces that uh, willingness to go down that road. Because I can see some doctors that probably are afraid of it and don't want to go down that road. Absolutely. Oh, they don't. And they ignore Absolutely. it. Yeah, Absolutely. they ignore totally. it. Totally. Absolutely. I see that Absolutely. constantly uh, with my colleagues. And I, I don't like that because... You know, I don't think they or I went into medicine for that. You know, ours was to help people, save them if we can. But, you know, being a geriatric doctor, my my job has been to also make sure that as they're moving forward toward end of life, that they, they are not in pain, that they're not suffering. But part of being a doctor when you go in there is with the intention to keep reinventing yourself, no matter mm-hmm. what comes up. Mm-hmm. Not, well, I got into being a doctor because I thought it was going to be just in this box. Mm-hmm. No, you being a doctor is going to mean you have to keep pushing the box and make it bigger. That's, That's right, keep, exactly. Yeah. And pushing you have to, those signs. Yeah, you have to keep reinventing yourself to meet the need of whatever people are, are facing. And if it's suffering at the end of their life, you're going to have to, as a doctor, figure out how to adjust yourself to be what they what they need for you in that and moment. I'm That's so true. thankful that in our profession are astute physicians and even legislators who see that people do are, are suffering and I, I'm I'm thankful that they're staying ahead of the time and you know looking at the models in other states and coming back to California and seeing that um, we need to make changes and I was Last year, I was at the airport and I saw the crew who were going up from Los Angeles to fight for the rights of 
patients and you could see the passion and compassion that all of them had in this battle which they eventually got legislated so i was i'm really happy that for uh, that has allowed me to take into my practice the ability to you know, help my patients out, put them in a direction, give them options, make sure they understand what their problems are and what their needs in the future are going to be. I think that's that's where medicine always has to move. And if I'm not open to that, I'm in trouble as a, as a doctor. That's right. And on that note, we need to take a break and we'll be back in a few minutes to speak with Alex Urbina. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. And we're speaking with Alex Urbina, a life coach. And unfortunately, we have to wind down <laughs> mm-hmm. Although we're pretty wound up. Right uh, that's now. right. That's right. <laughs> but how do, you know, we, we've had our listeners listening. They, they say, okay, now we know what a life coach is. We know where you're coming from. We know your ideals and, you know, what you believe in. And I think it uh, allows them an openness that says, hey, you know, I maybe I can uh, afford, uh, you know, an attempt to feel better through a life coach how do they get a hold of you well they would reach out to me on my website at alexurbina.com and that's it's spelled u-r-b-i-n-a uh, you can also find me on the khts website i have my own radio show here on fridays mm-hmm. um, but you can you can you know just go if you, even if you google search me on the internet alex urbina You'll get uh, you'll be able to get a hold of me. And your radio show is great. Oh, thank you so much. I you know, I, I don't get to listen in in its entirety, but with you and your daughter coming on, I mean, what a tandem you have. I mean, I have such great admiration because I do think that you know the the acorn doesn't fall too far from the oak tree, and because you know how your daughter speaks and how mature she sounds and what she puts out there uh, the great information both of you put out there is just i mean an asset to our community thank you so much and and i and i love my daughter she's amazing and uh you know we're, we're kind of like uh we're, we're, we are the acorn from the mm-hmm. from the the oh, oak tree because uh, we think alike, you know, and we also have our own stubbornness alike. And, uh, you know, you have that great. you have that dad daughter and uh-huh. you have that one kid that you're like, all right, you're just like me. And so we bump heads a lot. <laughs> uh-huh. But it, but it's cool because we have we give ourselves permission to challenge each other uh-huh. yes. um, and we do it with grace. We do it with compassion. Um, I'm always looking to see how she's seeing it and she's always looking to see it. OK, how does my dad see it? And I think as long as we have that openness to communicate and we have that compassion in our heart, we learn how to get along with each other we learn how to tolerate and we learn how to try to see it from each other's point of view and I think that's what what makes relationships great is when you have that openness like that you know it's interesting I've been watching bits and pieces of the convention and the Trump family I've I've never seen such warmth and caring about each other I don't know whether you've listened to any of it or not but every one of those kids they get along beautifully. They've learned from each other. They've learned from their father. And I, I'm thinking, wow, we've never seen that at a convention before, you know? But there's a lot to be said for families mm-hmm. playing together and staying together and working together oh, yeah. and loving together. Now, is there a phone number, though, that we that you have or just contact here at the radio yeah i'll give my phone number out it's 661-505-5021-5021 or alexurbina.com you can get all that information on my website alex great having you on it's always a pleasure thank you guys uh, so much i appreciate it it's, it's enlightening to our seniors to open up the world to them know that there are options know that they can ask Mm -hmm. questions and maybe have solutions to their problems that's what we're looking for here on the show and certainly you have provided that for us today thank you so much i appreciate being here thank you we are sponsored by advanced audiology and scv in home care listen to us next week on the senior hour now go and enhance your quality of life